So greetings from Goblin Valley State Park in Utah. So I'm in this really strange land of hoodoos and just these really cool um, rock formations and colors and it's just an amazing place. And it's a really popular place for families with kids because it is like this giant playground of, of um, things you can climb all over the place. And it just, it's so much fun just to walk around and take photos and every single photo you take is different. And it, it's just amazing just to walk around and the compositions you can come up with are, are endless here. So um, needless to say, I have fallen in love with this place. So by nature of this, um, you know, this area, I find that uh, using a wide angle lens really, really serves me well. And the reason for that is because there, there are so many of these rocks that just go on forever. Uh, there's a lot of depth here. And um, plus you have a lot of foreground uh, interest going on. So I find that uh, I get up to some interesting foreground and shoot with this wide angle. And because of that, because of the depth of field and what it is that I'm shooting, I want to take a shot that has sharpness or in focus all the way through. So in other words, if this is the rock that's in my foreground, I want that to be sharp as well as everything that's off in the distance or what we call infinity. So what I wanted to talk about is when you are taking photographs that have a lot of depth to them. In other words, you're going to have something that's very close to you, close to the camera, and something that's way off in the distance, and you want to maintain sharpness or focus throughout, is where do you land your focus point in the frame? So where from here all the way out there do you focus in order to accomplish that goal? So that brings me to the topic of hyperfocal distance. And I'm pretty sure if you are a photographer that you have heard about that and you probably have read up on it. And if you're like me, you look at some of these web pages or websites that try to explain hyperfocal distance and I'm reading it and I'm seeing a lot of calculations. I'm seeing terms like circle of confusion and you know, it just kind of boggles me after a while. And I think, just give me the bottom line. What is the bottom line here? Is it something that I really need to pay attention to to take a good photograph? Okay, so what is hyperfocal distance? Well, without going into all the gory detail, let's boil it down to what it means for us in the field. It is the distance between the camera and a point that is determined, predetermined, and that is the point you are going to focus on. So whatever object is at that distance, you're going to focus on that. And if you do that, that means everything behind that point will be sharp and in focus. Okay, that sounds good, but what about everything that's in front of that point? Now, think of your hyperfocal distance, whatever it is, and divide it by two. So let's, for example, let's just say that hyperfocal distance has been calculated to be 10 feet. So if you focus 10 feet away from the camera, everything behind is going to be sharp, but in front, the five feet beyond that point will also be sharp, the halfway distance. So think of the 10 feet, divide it by two, and think everything that is five feet from that point will also be in focus. So where I am right now, I have two rocks. I have this one and I have this other one that is about, I would say, seven feet away. So let's say my hyperfocal distance is seven feet. If I focus on that rock, that rock and everything beyond it will be sharp and in focus. But what about this rock that is about two feet away from me? Well, since my hyperfocal distance is seven feet, that means three and a half feet beyond that in front of it will be in focus. Does this rock fall into that distance? No, it's too close to me. It would fall out of that focal range and would not be sharp and in focus. Okay, now hyperfocal distance 
depends on a few things. First of all, your camera. For the most part, we're talking about full frame versus crop sensor. So the difference between those two cameras will affect hyperfocal distance. The other two things that affect it greatly are focal length and aperture. So the wider the, the focal length or the smaller the focal length or the wider the angle um, that you're using for your shot and if these are the types of images you want with a foreground and a background you're going to want to use a wide angle. If that's the case your hyperfocal distance will be shorter than if you were to zoom in and use a longer focal length. So focal length of 28 versus 17, the hyperfocal distance will be affected by that. At 28, it's going to be further away. At 17, it's going to be closer. Now, aperture also affects hyperfocal distance. So the narrower the aperture, in other words, the higher the F number, the shorter will be the hyperfocal distance. So if I use an aperture of 8, my hyperfocal distance will be longer than if I use an aperture of 16. Well, that should all make sense because if what you're looking for is great depth of field with a lot of detail and sharpness throughout, you're going to want to use a wide angle lens and you're likely going to use an aperture that's narrow enough to capture that depth of field. So now that you know what hyperfocal distance is and what affects it, the next thing is, well, how do you figure it out? How do you determine where to focus when I'm taking a shot with an object that's two feet away and more objects off into a th infinity? Well, the good news is you don't have to calculate. Somebody else has done that for you. So you can go on various websites and people will offer you a chart from which you can plug in your camera, usually your camera brand and model, and then you can also choose aperture and uh, focal length, and then come up with your hyperfocal distance at those settings. Or if you have a magic rectangle, you can download a hyperfocal distance app, and they're typically free. Sometimes they'll ask you for a little money to upgrade if you can't find your specific camera brand and model and need to upgrade, well, consider that really if it's a full frame, you can use an older model to come up with the same calculation. Um, same thing with your crop sensor. So, you know, if you don't want to spend a few dollars, you really don't have to. But once you have the app, then of course you can, you can use it, you can set it at your camera brand model, and then just adjust it by aperture and focal length to get that hyperfocal distance. All right, so now that I have that information, I know that when I am wandering around this place and looking for foreground objects with the background, I have to kind of look at the distance um, from which I'm going to shoot. So I'm, I can pose first, and if I'm at 17, so I'm really close to this rock. So if I want that rock in the frame, I'm going to have to go as wide as 17. Well, that's really good because with an aperture of 11, I calculated, let me get my little cheat sheet out, aperture 11, 17 millimeters, 3 feet. My hyperfocal distance is 3 feet. And just a little tip, go a little beyond 3 feet, 3 and a half. Now, I know it's kind of, you're not going to have a measuring tape to really get specific about it, but estimating it at the end of that rock is 3 feet. So I just go a little beyond it, and I know that when I take that shot, everything will be sharp. Three feet, remember, one and a half feet in front, that's going to give me that entire rock in focus. Okay, so we talked about hyperfocal distance, what it is, uh, why we want to use it, and what affects it, and then how you can determine it while you're in the field. And, you know, it, it sounds like a really... Uh, complicated uh, issue and maybe one that you think isn't that important, but um, start taking some shots and see what happens when you just point at any old object out there and then you've got these close-ups here that don't come into focus. You're thinking, well, I didn't quite get that depth of field that I wanted. So 
think about hyperfocal distance, you don't have to do any calculation. Just bring an app with you or a cheat sheet or whatever and, um, and focus on the right distance to get that depth of field and to get that sharpness and detail in your images. Well, thanks for looking on. I hope I made something that seems complicated a little simpler and something you can, you can take out into the field and uh, improve your images. And of course, go out there and have fun.